Hello, everyone. This is Connor with Representative Chrissy Houlihan's office. I am her communications director, and we are using our new technology today. So please, everyone, if you can hear me, press 3. Perfect. Okay. Looks like we're doing great. All right. Thank you so much. So we're, got, we're about to start our sixth coronavirus telephone town hall. This is our second formal one focused on small business. Um, just before I turn it over to Representative Houlihan, if you have a question at any point throughout the call, please press 3, and that will indicate and put you in the queue. We're going to do our best to get to everyone's questions, but, of course, there are hundreds on the line. So if we do not get to your questions, please shoot us an email at pao6.smallbusiness at mail.house.gov. We'll repeat that later in the call as well, or call our office. We have specialists waiting to answer these questions. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Representative Houlihan. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us this afternoon for our call. Uh, this is our second formal coronavirus telephone town hall, specific, uh, specifically focused on protecting small businesses. And I participated in a variety of other ones across our community during the pandemic to speak virtually with our small business community as much as I possibly am able to. Um, as Connor mentioned, uh, there will be opportunities to take notes or to write down URLs or emails, and so I would recommend you having a pen or a pencil with you or with paper in case you want to write anything down, any of these contacts that we're giving you. Um, everything also can be found on our website, which as a reminder is houlihan.house.gov. Um, I personally am a former small business leader in our community, and I genuinely know firsthand the struggles that are being exacerbated by this crisis. And I know that many of you are facing really tough questions uh, as this pandemic continues to spread and unfold. And I genuinely believe that the small businesses of our community and of our country are clearly the backbone of our economy. And as small businesses succeed, then our economy, of course, succeeds as well. And when our small businesses fail, of course, our economy does too. So in Congress, I'm genuinely doing everything I can to be an advocate for this community, uh, to deliver the very much needed relief that many of you guys are rightfully demanding of your government. Uh, and this is definitely not time for partisan politics because the health of our citizenry and our economy is certainly on the line. So as your elected representative, I've taken a number of actions so far that I'd like to briefly go over with you um, in Congress. And so here are some of them. In Congress, I've helped to pass the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act, which is referred to as the CARES Act. It is a historic and bipartisan stimulus package of more than $2 trillion that included a mandate to make federally backed low interest loans and grants available to our country's small businesses. Uh, specifically, this legislation ordered that about $350 billion be provided in forgivable loans to small businesses to allow them to pay for employees and to keep those employees on payroll. In addition, there was $17 billion appropriated for debt relief for current and new small business borrowers and a $10 billion allocation for immediate disaster grants of up to $10,000 for small businesses as well. Since passing the CARES Act, agencies like the SBA, who is on the line today, have been working tirelessly to roll out these programs as quickly as possible. In fact, I saw one statistic that said something like 14, I want to say years, but it might have been months, worth of loans were given out of the last seven days. Uh, so it really has been a pretty monumental lift. As you may know, the funds appropriated for PPP loans have been exhausted. And like you, I'm certainly frustrated that we uh, are playing politics with these critical resources, although I will pause in a minute and look at my phone because I do believe there has been a breakthrough in the negotiations. And as soon as I have a chance to take a breath, I'll take a look. It looks like that we may have a deal, uh, and I'll take a look for you guys to, and read on that. So I've clearly made it, house, uh, I've clearly made it uh, obvious to the House leadership that I, that I report to effectively that our community's small businesses need access to capital, and they need it now. Uh, and I stand ready right now to get on a train or in a car and get down to Washington to, to vote if that's appropriate for the, the continuation of the PPP vital program. So any sort of legislative package that we agree to certainly must address these concerns and provide the resources uh, to our small businesses that we all need to be able to have them survived. Um, I've been meeting virtually with our community's small business owners and lending, in, lending institutions over the last several weeks to hear all of your concerns on both sides and to make sure that I'm translating that feedback into future legislative actions. And so as a result, 
I've mounted a couple of efforts on the House and Senate uh, leaders to the House and Senate leadership to pay special attention to the unique challenges of some people and organizations that I think have been missing in our PPP outreach. Specifically, I think we've been missing what would be called micro businesses or those organizations that are smaller than 20 people. And I want to make sure that we are advocating for those smallest of businesses in whatever we do subsequently with the PPP program uh, and with the IDLE program or the Economic in Injury Disaster Loan program. Our next uh, legislative efforts and whatever further stimulus packages that we have, and I do believe there probably will be more than one, two, and three, uh, must address these concerns. And I definitely will continue to talk to everybody in our, in our stakeholder uh, area and build coalitions as, as I am able to make sure that we get this done. Here are a couple of other additional efforts uh, that, we have been on, 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 that have, we have been undertaking on our behalf in our community. First is unlocking the low interest economic injury disaster loans for Pennsylvania businesses. Uh, I led the Pennsylvania delegation, both Democrats and Republicans, Senate and House, in urging the SBA to expeditiously grant this request from the governor. Uh, and I'm proud to have helped lead that charge and ensure that those loans are now available to you all as quickly as possible. I also introduced something called the Easing Disruption for America's Small Contractor Act of 2020, and this is legislation that would accelerate the payment of federal contract dollars to small businesses in this really acute time of uncertainty and economic need, so small business contractors would have more time to meet their contractual op obligations. And in the first bipartisan corona relief package, I helped to pass a provision that provides a billion dollars in loan subsidies, which would enable Small Business Administration to provide $7 billion in low, in low interest loans to help small businesses affected by the outbreak. And so as we talked about in the beginning, these are only the beginnings and the starting point of what I am confident will unfortunately have to be a series of other actions that we take uh, legislatively amongst other uh, avenues to make sure that we can pull ourselves out of this crisis. And I'll continue to be, as, as I am able to be a resource for the community, for our entrepreneurs and business leaders and for our employees. So here's where you might need your pencil. Um, if you are struggling, please, please do reach out to me and my team. We are definitely here to help. We've set up a variety of rapid response teams in our office, uh, and one is focused specifically on small businesses. So the small business rapid response team can be reached by emailing PA, like Pennsylvania, 06.smallbusiness at mail.house.gov. So it's again pa06.smallbusiness at mail.house.gov. And of course, you can also visit our website, which is um, Houlihan, which is spelled H O U L A H A N dot house dot gov. And there you'll have slash services slash small businesses as the place that you'll go for your most updated information on a very uh, evolving situation. My hope is that on this call today that our panel and I will get to hear some of your questions and concerns. Uh, on the line, we also have Mr. Steve Dixel, the District Director of the Eastern Pennsylvania Small Business Association, or SBA. We have Mr. Michael Kane, the Deputy Direct District Director of the Eastern Pennsylvania Small Business Administration. And we also have Mr. John Hess, the Chairman of SCORE in Chester County. And I'm very, very grateful to have these gentlemen on our call today. The SBA has been incredibly instrumental in helping roll out these critical small business assistance programs. And I have been and will continue to work with the SBA to clarify and improve these programs so that everyone in our community who is in need can access these crucial funds. SCORE's small business expertise and mentorship has also been invaluable during this crisis for small business owners who are seeking guidance. And I've requested that additional federal dollars also be allocated to organizations like SCORE so they can continue to serve on the front line for our small businesses. So the structure of this town hall will be as follows. First, Mr. Dixel and Mr. Hess will introduce themselves to the group and hopefully give us a good update on how the SBA and SCORE can be of service during this difficult and uncertain time. Then we will take your questions. And if at any point you do have a question, please press three on your phones, which will indicate to Connor, our moderator, that you'd like to ask a question. And we will do our best to answer any and all questions that you have today. But if for whatever reason we're unable to get to yours, please do remember to email your question to PA06 
www.smallbusiness at mail.house.gov and we'll make sure to get back to you as quickly as possible. I thank you so much and now I'm pleased to hand this over to Mr. Dixel. Well, thank you very much, Congresswoman. We do appreciate your support of the CARES Act, which did provide $359 billion of forgivable loans to our nation. Um, the CARES Act um, has a provision in it known as the Payroll Protection Program, which the SBA is currently implementing. Um, to your points a little bit earlier, and just as a quick update here, the SBA did provide nearly 22 times the amount of loans in 14 days as compared to the entire fiscal year 20 in total of 1.2 million loans for nearly $359 billion. In terms of the Commonwealth Congresswoman, the SBA is proud to report that here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, as of April 13th, SBA approved nearly $10 billion in loans with nearly 37,000 loans going out across the Commonwealth through our lenders and partners with an average loan size of nearly $280,000. Today, Mike Kane and myself, along with our score representative, will be happy to take any and all questions that you might have in terms of payroll protection, as well as the economic injury disaster loans, as well as avail us an opportunity to discuss other programs that we might have during this time to help small businesses. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And we now are going to turn it over for, to Mr. John Hess for his remarks as well. Great. Um, and, and thank you, Steve, and, and thank you, Representative Houlihan, for um, giving us the opportunity to talk about SCORE and being part of this team. And we really are, you know, a team public and nonprofit uh, to really help small business. So, um, yeah, so I'm, a, I'm, I'm the chairman of SCORE in Chester in Delaware County. Um, really quick, I'll just explain who we are. I know that's not the focus of today, but um, so we are a resource partner of the SBA. So we've got a lot of, you know, hands and feet that can help you um, with the SBA. And we're all about small business. We're an 11,000 member volunteer organization across the country. We've got over 100 volunteers in Chester County um, who are here to help you with your small business needs. Um, again, all of our services are free, so you don't pay for any help from, from what we give. And we, we specialize in mentoring, so we'll mentor. Now it's all video, but that's okay. Um, and we, we have a lot of seminars and workshops that we're now putting live, so they're going to be done over Zoom. Um, and so we're, you know, we're pivoting so we can deliver everything digitally. But, you know, so why, why am I here today? I want to tell you what SCORE can do for you, right? So we can help you guide through the SBA loan process, whether it's the EIDL or PPP. Um, you know, if you've got questions, we're very knowledgeable on both of those processes. We can help you, you know, the SBA, and they're great, but there's only so many of them. They can get overwhelmed. We've got, you know, Maybe not all 100, but we've probably got 50 people who can jump in and, and help you get through that process, um, help you understand the impact to your business, work through some different uh, scenarios and modeling, expected losses, what your revenue is going to look like on the other side of this. And, and we will get through it at some point. But, you know, we help you, you know, talk about what your forecast will be because that's part of, especially on the, on the EIDL process, how you're going to pay these loans back and how you're going to be successful. The other thing is we can help you navigate all the different resources, federal, state, county. There's a lot of stuff out there. If you go to our website, which is Chester Delco, one word, Chester like the county, and then delco.score.org, and we've got, we redid our homepage, so it's all about COVID. And on there, you'll see different resources, educational webinars, whatever. We also, thank you SBA, we're, we've been doing a daily webinar about the two loan processes where we take a lot of questions and answers for about an hour. Um, and we've done that for the past three weeks actually and we're planning to do them next Tuesday, Thursday for the rest of April and you know, our partners there are great. And then the last thing, you know, we're here if you just need a confidential uh, set of eyes to look at things, bounce things off. We've got a lot of experienced mentors across 
many industries, many functional expertise. So if you just aren't sure kind of how to work through your plans, you know, we're here to help. Um, and again, it's chesterdelco.score.org. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll give you email addresses too. If you want to reach us, I, gosh, I hate doing this. I'm going to give you my email address. If 500 people email me, I won't be able to get to you quickly. But it's john.hess at scorevolunteer.org. Um, and if you do, I can't handle 500 people, but, you know, my colleagues will help me if, if we can do that. So, you know, thank you very much for our opportunity. And like, um, like Steve said, we, we will be prepared to handle, you know, questions as they come. And I'll turn it back over to Representative Houlihan. Thank you. Uh, thank you both very much for that nice introduction. And I thought what we would do with the remainder of our time is I have um, a bunch of questions, uh, or actually several questions that were pretty frequent ones that our rapid response team has been fielding, uh, very common ones. And I thought I'd start by asking you guys those few questions and then we can open it up for, for more. Uh, by way of PPP update, uh, what the update is, is that uh, Mr. McCarthy has indicated his willingness to um, not only replenish the PPP, but also uh, help with hospital funding as well, which has been one of the sticking points. Uh, I will keep you updated if I have any more information to add, but that is what there is to add there. Uh, for those of you who are following along, I think everybody understands and is uh, adamant that we need to refund, uh, replenish the PPP. $250 billion is what we're talking about, and I frankly don't think that's enough e either. Uh, but we're also trying to make sure that we're able to fund many of the hospitals that are very, very challenged right now. Several in our area are on the brink of the same kind of economic disaster that many of our businesses are, too. Uh, also trying to make sure that our small and local governments are being helped um, that is also something that I've consistently heard in the many phone calls I've made to our small mayors uh, and township supervisors as well. So we can follow up on that later, but before that, I'll get into the questions that you commonly, you most commonly ask. The most common complaint that my office has received from business owners is that their preferred lender isn't perhaps offering PPP loans or the lenders are only offering PPP loans to their existing customers. And I've spoken to banks and credit unions in our community, and I understand that everyone is working to offer loans, and if they're able to, to new customers, but it still poses a challenge to people who need the funds immediately. Uh, so my first question is, what is your advice to business owners who can't seem to find a, le a lender for PPP loans? How quickly is the SBA approving new lenders? Well, thank you very much, Congressman, for that question. Um, in short, we recommend that business owners start by contacting their bank, their bank that they have a relationship with. If the bank is not participating, then they should go to our website at sba.gov forward slash paycheck protection. And on that website, they'll find a list of lenders based on businesses in their own zip code. Also, too, Congresswoman, Woman, if, if, if a lender is not participating, the <clears throat> Treasury provision uh, in their interim financial uh, regulations has allowed non-bank lenders to participate in the program. For example, FinTech, PayPal, Intuit, and QuickBooks and Square have also been approved to offer PPP loans. So once the program opens back up again, if your lender is not participating in the program, you can go to our website, you can see who is by zip code, and if you can't find a lender that, that meets your needs, you can go to a non-bank lender, such as the ones we mentioned, that have been approved to offer PPP loans. Thank you very much for that, that uh, answer. Uh, my second question is that there has been a delay and, uh, and confusion regarding EIDL loans and advances. And Congress mandated that the EIDL advances be provided within three days of submitting a loan application, but we've heard from people that they've been waiting in some cases for weeks before they receive their advance. Can you give mm -hmm. us an update on the ro rollout of EIDL grants? How long should people expect to wait for their advances? And how is the SBA calculating the amount of the advance, advance that people receive? Yes. So right now, SBA is starting to roll out the EIDL grant. That is going on currently. And the money is being directly deposited into someone's business account. According to our Office of 
disaster assistance to ensure that the greatest number of applicants can receive assistance during this challenging time, the amount of the advance will be determined by the number of pre-disaster employees as of January 31st, 2020. The advance provides up to $1,000 per employee to a maximum of $10,000. And how long do you think people should expect to wait for their um, advances? How, what's the timeline that people should expect given the, the mandate of three, three days? No, it's, a, it's a very good question. And there are some challenges with the IELTS program. We, we had quite, quite a number of people apply, but as it stands right now, we can say very confidently that the IDLE grants are rolling out right now as we speak, that money is being deposited into accounts. Do you have a, a tracker? I know that there's been a lot of conversation about trackers of how much of the $349 billion was allocated or appropriated. Do you have a tracker that is uh, allowing people to have greater insight into how many days it takes for people to get approved for a PPP loan or for an IDLE grant? Unfortunately, we don't. Um, the PPP loan is based, obviously, on the relationship between the borrower and the lender. And the idle relationship is based upon the relationship between the Office of Disaster Assistance that's located within SBA and the borrower. And we do not. We're only provided high-level enterprise numbers in terms of who has received um, um, l lending within these programs. The only information that we can report on as of right now is the PPP, uh, the Payroll Protection Program, which we have received from our Office of Capital Access. Congresswoman, this is Michael Kane. Um, yes. If I could add maybe just a little bit of additional detail uh, to that. Um, uh, if anyone is looking for a status on their individual economic injury disaster loan advance uh, and loan application, uh, they can contact the Disaster Assistance Customer Service Center. Uh, that phone number is 800-659-2955. Uh, and if they're looking for a status on their PPP loan, uh, they would need to work directly with their lending institution. Um, and each institution, of course, is pro are processing those applications uh, at different speeds, depending upon the level of resources uh, within that institution. That's perfect, because my final question was about uh, if you're not able to receive an update or information about your application, what should you do? And so that's very, very helpful information. Uh, that is the, some of my several questions that we typically get through our task force, um, our, our team. And I'm going to now at this point transition to taking questions from people who are on the line. Uh, just as a reminder, you hit the number three in order to ask a question. And also to give you an order of magnitude, we have about four or 500 bus uh, businesses on the line. So for whatever reason we're not able to get to your question, please remember to email us at pa 6 dot small business uh, dot com I believe at that small business I'll, I'll, I'll remind you of that again uh, sorry I can't remember that one but now I'll turn it over to Connor all right thank you so much so I'm going to just call on people who have their hands up again press three if you have a question our first question comes from uh, Robert Robert you should be on the line now yes uh, I've inquired several times about uh, sole proprietorship business owners and if we will be receiving unemployment at any time soon. It has been promised to us. Just wanted to see where we are with passage of that. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Sorry. Sorry, I was on um, mute. Some of the things that uh, CARES allows for is is for that, and my guess is that where it's stuck is probably at the state level right now. But also importantly, you are a small business in, in and of yourself. You are a micro business, therefore you are. Um, we are trying very hard to make sure that you are also considered for these PPP loans as well. So we're understanding from the state that in terms of unemployment uh, for you, that it would be about a week or so from now that you will be able to um, access those benefits. 
at uc.ca.gov is where you would go. But also importantly, when, when I was talking about micro uh, businesses, you are one of those businesses, and I'm hopeful that in the next round you might also be included in the PPP. Thank you, Robert, for your question. Our next question comes from April. April, you should be on the line. Hi, my question is I'm also a sole proprietorship, but I don't have any employees, so I wasn't sure to even what to even apply for. Do I just go through unemployment? Do I do an economic? Um, injury disaster loan. I just was, I don't even know where to start. It's I don't make that much money. It's just need I, I need a little bit of supplement to pay for my family bill. Uh, April, I'm, thank I'm, you for your question. Go ahead. I'm happy to take that, and then I would love it if anybody has anything uh, else to add. But you are qualified for all of these things. You are qualified. Uh, for EIDL, you are qualified, um, I hope, with the PPP shortly. You are qualified to apply for unemployment. You sort of have a choice in a sense, uh, but SCORE can help you determine what makes the most sense for you, and so I'll turn it over to SCORE. Great. Thank, thank you, Chrissy. Yeah, um, probably, and, and like she said, I mean, the, the good point is you're qualified for all of them. You know, the bad thing is you got to figure out which. So. Yeah, if, if you wanted to meet with a SCORE counselor, we could sit down and sort of go through um, what the impact to you is, whether you know it's your, your salary that you're drawing from your sole proprietor. I couldn't remember if you said it was an LLC or not, or if it was you know sole LLC or just a regular sole proprietor. But we can sit down and, and work through, through those with you and, and sort of determine, you know, this is what you'd get if you went through unemployment, um, and this is what you would get or what type of loan you could apply for if it was idle. Um, now, I think the SBA, you can correct me if I'm wrong, for idle, you don't ask for an amount, you apply for the loan, they will tell you what you qualify for, and then you can accept or decline that. And I think you have six months from when they accept to whether you decide to take it. So, you know, that's good to apply for because you can have it out there while you're looking at PPP or unemployment, and if those run out, or they don't make sense, then you can take your idle loan. But yeah, we we know all we know those different processes, so we can help you through that. We've done done that for a few clients. Hopefully that helps you. Great. Thanks. Thank you so much. And April, thank you for your question. Our next question comes from Michael. Um, and also, I forgot to say, please let us know where you're calling from. So, Michael, you should be on the line. Hi there. Um, my name is Mike. I'm calling from my company's name is Masterpiece Multimedia. Um, I, I've uh, been waiting for the PPP to come in, and I believe that I've been approved for that. Um, my biggest issue that I have right now that I, I need from sort of a legislative perspective is, um, you know, we we've put in for our insurance for uh, catastrophic losses, um, and my insurance company is basically claiming. Uh, that it's not their problem. Um, the, the issue that I kind of have at this point with that is that, you know, uh, if it really was for just about any other reason uh, that would be catastrophic that I could not open, uh, there's provisions for them to cover uh, my losses of revenue uh, and uh, sort of help me out with this. Um, and there is sort of provisions for civil unrest and things of that nature if there were looting or a fire or whatever else it would be that I would not be able to open my doors. Uh, they they're basically have provisions to help, uh, but they're sort of saying at this point in time that they have, uh, you know, they have no rational reason to try to get involved in helping. Uh, and I've had the same insurance company for 20 years of business. I've given them hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, to protect myself, and this is kind of the catastrophic position that we're in where I would help, I would hope that they'd be there to help, uh, and perhaps somebody from a legislative position could uh, work on um, making sure that they don't uh, have the ability to walk away. Uh, and I, I really, really appreciate this really very sound idea. And I have heard this uh, from a lot of other people uh, throughout the last several weeks. And I know that a lot of my colleagues have heard this idea too. Um, a lot of us are, um, you know, hearing the same things from our community. So thank you so much for sharing your experience. So what I typically do, and this is not an exception whenever we hear a great idea like this, is we feed this into our, into our leadership and into kind of the next round of bills. 
um, we create opportunities and ideas and hopefully they make it into the next round of package. So right now we obviously have just come out of, COVID, uh, of CARES and we're now heading into what would be phase four or CARES 2.0. And so this is an idea as an example that could be very much um, part of the package. And it's just a matter of whether or not we can get the support that we need bipartisanly and within you know, both sides, uh, House and Senate, to be able to support it. But I think it's a great idea and I very much thank you for sharing that experience. Thank you, Michael. Um, our next question comes from Megan. Um, yes, I was just wondering if anything is being done to help prevent bigger businesses from taking advantage of these PPP loans. I heard that uh, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse got $20 million in PPP loans. Hi there, Megan. I actually heard that too on the call that I was just on as well, and I had a note to follow up on it to ask that very same question uh, to make sure that people are not taking advantage of these loans. I think one of the, the issues that we have, of course, when we're uh, standing up huge programs like this is that there will be abuse, and in, in some cases there will be fraud, and we're trying to make sure that we control that as much as we're able to. Uh, but that's, that's why we're trying to um, make sure that we have set aside funding for small and community, you know, small businesses, for people, uh, banks that are smaller too, uh, to make sure that we're addressing also focusing on those small community businesses and small community banks as well. But I'm going to check into the Ruth's Chris thing too. I heard about that this afternoon. All right. Thank you, Megan. Um, our next question comes from Greg. Greg, let us know where you're calling from, and you are on the line, sir. Uh, Greg, do we have you on the line? All right. Looks like we lost Greg. Um, we've got another question from Edward. Edward, you should be on the line, sir. Hi. Uh, Ed Coons, I'm calling from... Uh... Baxter's Restaurant in Paoli. The, my question in regards to the PPP program. The program is, to say the least, complicated. And it also is not very um, informative. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't go into precise detail on how we turn the loan into a grant or how many people we're allowed to hire back or how many people we have to hire back. And in fact, as I read it, it actually says if you don't satisfy certain conditions, you may not get any grant. So I'm, I, I think we need some clarification coming from Congress to, uh, to address these issues. And in the, in, in the words, I, I, don't, I forget who said it, but let's keep it simple. I think, yeah, I think um, this is a great, great, great question, and we're going to hand this over to the SBA to, to help us answer that. Thank you so much. And by the way, I love your restaurant. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Edward, hey, this is Mike Kane, uh, Deputy Director here for SBA in Eastern Pennsylvania. And, uh, and I do understand uh, uh, the frustration that goes along with it. I, I want to make sure that, that um, everyone understands that um, – you know, we basically stood up as an agency uh, working in conjunction with Treasury, stood up a brand new program in an incredibly short period of time. Um, and uh, I can tell you, you know, I've been working for the SBA uh, going on here 13 years, and uh, I haven't seen anything like this in, in my career before. And, you know, trying to utilize uh, something like an interim final rule, which is, you know, the, the basic regulations that are associated with this program and so forth, um, and, and just trying to do everything in such an incredibly short period of time. So I, I hear what you're saying, and, and, and I understand your frustration. I can tell you that, um, you know, there will be additional guidance that is going to continue to come out, including information related to the forgiveness component and how that's going to work. Um, I can also tell you that, uh, and I'm proud to say that, you know, I think I have the best team uh, of SBA in the field right here in eastern Pennsylvania, and uh, we're working real hard every single day to make sure that all of the lending institutions understand how to utilize this program, what they can and can't do, along with as new guidance comes out, continuing to educate them all in an effort uh, to make uh, funds available for you and, and help them through that process so that they can in turn help you. 
Thank you, and thank you, Edward, for your question. Our next question comes from Jennifer. Jennifer, you should be on the line. All right. Hey, thank you very much, and I just want to thank your entire office, Congresswoman. Um, everybody has been spectacular. I'm uh, Jen Moorhead with uh, Science Explorers, and um, my question is actually um, for my husband, but I want to also speak to the business interruption insurance. I've also had um, insurance for 20 years. And you know, after getting a fifty thousand uh, dollar premium notice this year, uh, was told that uh, virus was an exclusion on paying off any business interruption insurance. But we qualify for everything else, like down the list. But because there was a virus, it it made it uh, un you know uninsurable, I guess. So that was an interesting little tidbit. I have no idea what to do about that. But um, when we are working with um, this PPP loan, we are approved. We got approved. I go to settlement on Monday. I'm very excited. However, um, my husband has a company called Zap Electrical who has uh, been banking with Santander, and they don't even have the applications available or anything like that. And I know that you know, he can go through PayPal and into it. I'm just kind of looking for the inside scoop on if it was you, where would you go <laughs> for him to – uh, get this in line once you know uh, it gets through for the second round. I, I'm we're just kind of at a loss because um, he's been with them for I don't know 20 some years, and they're just it's, it's a Spanish bank, I guess, and I don't know they just didn't have the things in place. So just looking for where should we go for the PPP. Jennifer, thank, you. thank you for your question, Jen. Um, Steve, do you want to take this from SBA? Hey, this is Mike Kane. So Steve actually needed to uh, to drop off the call and uh, and get on to another one. So I'm going to be with uh, everyone for the duration. And thank you so much for that question. Um, so uh, obviously, you know, I, I'm a government employee, so I, I can't give you a specific institution uh, to go to because that would, you know, basically qualify as an endorsement. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, if you go on to uh, the SBA website. Uh, to the uh, the paycheck protection uh, part of the website, um, you can. There's an area there where you can find a lender, and you can plug in your zip code, and it's going to pull up all the lenders that are going to be in that area that are participating with the program. Now, every lender is going to be a little bit different. Some are going to be taking applications only from their existing customers and some are going to be taking them from both existing as well as new customers. So I encourage you at that point in time then to reach out to them to find out if you're taking new customers. And as I said earlier, my staff are working behind the scenes every single day with our banking partners, bringing new institutions online, um, as well as training the institutions on how to leverage the program, how to interface with our systems. Um, I have never seen the amount of interest from the lending community in all my 13 years at SBA like I have seen with this program. We have institutions that we've never been able to have for our standard programs joining this program. So that's really great news um, that we have such a wide swath of institutions that is continuing to grow that are participating with this program. So yes, once the once you know funding comes back and the program comes back online. I would encourage you know to utilize that uh, website um, and then and go ahead and begin reaching out to lending institutions that are in your area. Thanks, Michael, and thank you, Jen, for your question. Our next question comes from um, Brian. Connor, Brian, oh, yeah, go ahead, Chrissy. Sorry. Yep. I also think that there's some possibility, and I um, I can't give you with great amount of detail or certainty that there will be some even further expansion of who will be able to be able to be able to process these loans in the next round as well, um, because I think we are all trying to figure out what vehicles we can deliver this money and these resources to as rapidly as possible in our community. Thanks, Chrissy. Um, Brian, you are now on the line. Yeah, hi, Brian Connolly. There you go. Yeah, hi, Brian Connolly, Downingtown, Pennsylvania. Um, so we applied for the PPP through uh, our local lender, <clears throat> our local bank that we have a deposit account with, and they rolled out the application systematically so that they did not, quote unquote, overload their system or tax their system. And they started rolling out on Friday and uh, after the PPP was announced. And um, 
We did not get our uh, invitation to apply until Monday morning, and they had all kinds of meltdown with their system that our application was not uh, accepted until Monday afternoon. So by the time our application, or back up, they then started processing applications, and from that point, they were only able to process the applications received from Friday through Sunday, and at that point, the, uh, the funding has dried up for the PPP. So anybody who applied after Sunday was left out of uh, getting funding for the PPP. Uh, further to that, when inquiring further with the, the Vice President that we were discussing this with, uh, she mentioned that senior management of this bank hand-selected who would get first uh, dibs on funding, getting funding for the PPP. That seems like a little fraudulent to me, and there's a little bit of favoritism. Is that uh, something that should not happen? And how can we be assured that we will get our funding to keep our business going? Thank you, this Brian, for your question. Go ahead, Go ahead Connor. Oh, this thank Chrissy. you for your question. <laughs> this is Chrissy. I, to my knowledge, do not have the authority or the ability to decide what banks do or don't do in terms of their processing. Uh, it, I do have the ability to try and provide incentives and, and opportunities for specific you know, kinds or categories of businesses to be helped. I will continue to advocate for that. I also do believe uh, with a high, high degree of confidence that this will not be, of course, the last money that is allocated to this program and that we will pretty darn rapidly be funding another tra tranche of it. And so I would say I would give you the strong advice to stay in line and to, and to stay put because I believe that we will be freeing up some resources shortly. Does, does anybody else have anything to offer there from um, SCORE or SBA? Uh, this is John Hess from SCORE. No, I mean, it, it's tough because I guess the banks, you know, can make their own decisions. It, you know, it doesn't sound fair to me. Um, you know, I guess, you know, I, I'd look for another bank possibly. I know that's kind of difficult. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know kind of how you can force that through. I mean, I don't know if it's, you know, SBA's got any ideas or, you know, do you go to the banking commissioner? I, you know, for the state, I, I'm not really sure. It, it doesn't seem very savory, but. All right, Brian, thank you for your question. Um, our next question comes from Andrew. Andrew, you should be on the line now, sir. Andrew, do we have you on the line? Okay, we'll move on. Um, our next question comes from Keith. Keith, you should be on the line. Yes, hello, it's uh, Keith Connolly from Downingtown. Uh, there's been some confusion um, with, when we went for PPP, we originally spoke with someone from the SBA and they told us if you do the PPP, you can't do the EIDL. And from other people I've heard that you can do both because the PPP is one thing that helps us with the wages and paying the health insurance and all that kind of stuff. But at this point, this far into it, we have some damages that I'm not sure how to recover from unless we get some other type of funding on top of the PPP. So I just wanted to get confirmation that once this thing opens up, we're already in the PPP. We haven't gotten approved yet, but I believe we're close. Can we still go after the EIDL? Thank you. This is John Hess. I don't know Great, if uh, you, Dan wants to opine, but you, you can apply for both programs. The, the only restriction is you, you can't sort of get money for the same thing, right? That's called double dipping. So if you use PPP to pay for wages, benefits, things like that, you can't use the proceeds of IDLE for that. You can use it for other things that you're damaged, and you should, right? So I, I think the advice would be you apply for both, and you get as much relief as you can, as long as you're not sort of paying for the same expense twice. There's there's no prohibition about being in both programs at all.
Thank you very much. Emily, our next question comes from you. Emily, you're on the line. Hi. Um, uh, let's see. I'm, I'm in Embryville, PA, my business. Um, the business that I work for is in Chester Springs. Um, this is a little picky question, but for the PPP loan forgiveness, how do you calculate um, the first week of payroll? Do you go by full week? Does it start exactly on the day that you get the money in your account? Um, things like that. Um, I need to know operationally because I have to, I'm the one who sets up how we're going to track it. And um, my boss doesn't want to be, um, you know, to be using that money for anything else besides this, um, besides the payroll that we're trying to cover. Thank you, Emily, for your question. Um, Mike, do you want to take this one? Mike, can we still have you on the line? You might be on mute. Okay. Um, it looks like we have lost. Uh, uh, Mike, let's see. You should be on now. Mike, can you hear? Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Michael. Yes. Thank you. Oh, Did you man. hear the question from Apologies. Emily? I got I got booted off the call, and then I called back in, and I was and I guess I was muted. My my apologies. Um, and and I'm having a hard. So can we just quickly repeat the question? So um, are, are is the question that you're trying to determine how you calculate your payroll? Um, how how do you determine what the eight week of payroll is? Um, as far as the loan forgiveness, when does that payroll start? Okay, so so you you so payroll is basically going to be wages and benefits uh, that you paid uh, to your employees uh, either over the last preceding twelve months or or for the uh, previous calendar year. So um, and you need to exclude then any cash payments that are over one hundred thousand dollars. Uh, to, um, uh, you know, to any individual employee. Um, in terms of the forgiveness component, so what would happen is once you get the approval from the lender um, and, uh, and then the lender closes the loan with you and makes their first disbursement, that's when the eight-week clock is going to start for you to begin paying those employees with the funds that you have, and you would pay them for a period of eight weeks. All right, and the, the goal here is to basically bring your payroll back to what we call the pre-crisis level. So that would be the, the payroll level that you had prior to uh, COVID-19. And the requirement that SBA has is that you utilize at least 75% of those funds to pay those employees. And then, of course, the remaining 25% you can utilize for other eligible costs such as, you know, rent, interest on your, you know, your mortgage, utility payments, things like that. Uh, and then, and of course, as I said earlier, we're going to be providing additional guidance out that talks about, you know, how, how, you know, everyone can apply for that forgiveness. You know, as I said also earlier, you know, we're standing up a brand new program. So we don't have all the details available right at this particular moment in time. Um, but the, that stuff is going to be available. It will be on SBA's website. It'll end up being on Treasury's website. And my team locally here in SBA uh, in Eastern Pennsylvania are going to be providing updated training both to the lenders as well as to folks in the small business community like yourself through town halls like this or the webinars that we're offering on a daily basis. Thanks, Michael. Um, and we've got time for one more question. Um, this one comes from Peter. Peter, you should be on the line. Hi, everybody. Thank you for all you're doing. Um, I am from Kennett Square. I've got two businesses. They're both S corporations. One is called Rocky Pictures and one is called Be Our Guest. Um, I think my issue is more with priority and the category of businesses. Um, both of my small businesses were deemed quote unquote non-essential and therefore closed. We have been generating zero, exactly zero in revenue, while other essential businesses are able to generate revenue, have gotten help 
from the SBA and all these programs. Seems to me like the priority is way out of whack. Um, so that would be my first question issue. The second one is uh, more in line with uh, funding. It sounds like TPP has run out of money. We can hope that it's going to be funded shortly. Um, I understand through the media and through uh, other sources that our unemployment compensation in Pennsylvania is also very close. Uh, in fact, it was close to insolvency prior to the crisis. So just as things are running out of money and everyone is relying on you know, these programs all continuing to be funded, what is the status of the funding for unemployment in Pennsylvania? Is that going to run out in the next week? And I guess thank you again for your, for your time and help. I thank you so much for your question. Um, I can't I can't comment uh, too directly on the state level issue of, of unemployment, other than to say that I know that we uh, at a federal level have certainly appropriated quite a bit of money through uh, the new unemployment expansion um, program that we've put forward in the in CARES uh, to in CARES 1.0. To give you an idea, there that program um, really includes a whole lot more people kinds of people than it did before. It also is uh, extensive and more extensive in terms of the amount of time um, that is available. It also has a larger amount of uh, $600 per week per person to be able to pay people through a four-month period as well. And so that money has been appropriated, but I can't, uh, from my position, certainly comment on what else is going on at the Pennsylvania level. Um, in terms of who's eligible for uh, the PPP as well, you know, those are also un uh, uh, just stating it, uh, statewide decisions in terms of what is necessary and what is, um, uh, I guess, life-sustaining is, is the governor's decision or choice on, on which ones are allowed to be open and not open. And so, unfortunately, from a federal perspective, I'm not certain how I could uh, legislate that, but I'll definitely take a look at it. I certainly don't envy the governor's decisions and having to try and figure out um, what is essential and what is not essential, but I'll take a look at, from a federal perspective, what, if anything, that we can do to be helpful in this next round of making sure that everybody is able to have access to this, these resources. Um, as an aside, I think it sounds as though your businesses are event-driven businesses. I have a daughter, my oldest, who is a, a director of theater, and um, I know that those businesses that are like yours are going to be in difficult straits for, for a while. And so I'm also looking at trying to figure out how to be helpful for uh, performances and those kinds of things, as, as you mentioned, because I think that they will take a while for us to be able to come together in, in, a, in a group fashion again. Thank you, Peter, for your question. Thank you, Congresswoman. Um, so that concludes our q and A. I see that there are still people in the queue with questions. Um, before I turn it back to Chrissy for closing remarks, please, please reach out to our office. We have a specialist on our small business issues who is more than happy to take your questions. Like I said, there are hundreds of people on the line, so we are clearly not able to get to everyone in the queue, but we do want to answer your questions in a timely fashion. So please reach out. Chrissy will provide the email um, in her closing remarks. Please reach out though, to PAO6 dot small business at mail dot house dot gov. With that, I'll turn it back over to you, Congresswoman. Um, thank you, Connor, and really thank you to our guests who joined us today to give their uh, insight from both SCORE and also from SBA. I really, really appreciate your expertise and, and lending that to us. And thank you, everyone, for joining us in the conversation. Uh, across our offices, which are normally in Reading, Westchester, and in D.C., but are now in everybody's homes, living rooms, and bedrooms, um, my colleagues and I are really working to protect our communities and to make sure that we all have as much as possible in these very uncertain times our clear and consistent guidance uh, to make good decisions, uh, both about our health uh, for each other and ourselves and also for our businesses, too. So I really want to make sure everyone on this line knows that we are genuinely um, available to you to connect with you and to, ne to connect you with resources. I'd like to encourage you to check out our website. Um, again, it's Houlihan spelled in a very unorthodox way. It's H-O-U-L-A-H-A-N dot house dot gov. Uh, backslash services backslash small hyphen businesses is one way to get to the, um, the most detailed information. And you can also email us, as I mentioned, at pa06.smallbusiness at mail.house.gov. 
Uh, if we didn't get to your question today, please really do uh, feel free to submit a question or a follow-up with the office so we can provide you with an answer. Uh, and last thing that I'll leave you with is that I really do genuinely believe that we will be able to get beyond our picky and partisan squabbling and be able to fund uh, the PPP again in a very short order. So um, I, I know that this is a, a difficult time for all of us, and I really look forward to continuing to work and serve us as aggressively as I am able to. Thank you very much for joining the call.